Welcome to my channel. This tutorial covers principles of drafting flat collars and rolled collars. There are four different collar styles with each collar building on the previous style. All measurements given are suggestions based on the garment used in the tutorial, but they can be adjusted for personal style preferences. Let's get started. Step one of this tutorial is to open the project file of the garment that you want to make the collar for. So go to file, open project, find the file in your computer, and then click open. I'm going to be using this bodice block and this project file is available on my Patreon. Collar patterns are dependent on the shape and the length of the neckline of the garment that they're going to be sewn to. So you need to make sure you like the fit of the neckline before you begin drafting the collar. If the neckline changes or you want to use a different garment for whatever reason, you do need to draft the collar from scratch. Once you have your project open, step two is to offset the desired collar width from the garment neckline. So I'm going to go to the edit pattern tool or the Z hotkey and that's right here in the 2D toolbar. And I'm just going to hold shift and then click the back neckline and the front neckline. Because my garment is duplicated with symmetric sewing, it's going to select it on the right side as well as the left side. So once those are selected, I'm going to right click the selection and then choose offset as internal line and number of offsets are going to be one. And then the distance is going to be the width of the collar that you want. So for this tutorial, I'm going to choose three inches and then click OK. Now that that line is offset, step three is to trace off the collar pattern from the garment pattern. So I'm going to go to the uh, trace pattern tool. That's the I hotkey, and that's right here in the 2D toolbar. And then I'm going to hold shift and then click all of these lines that are going to be a part of the collar. So that's the line that we offset, center back, the neckline here, and the shoulder line, and then the same on the front. So I'm just selecting those lines. Once they're selected and I can see a clear outline of the collar that I want to make, I'm going to right click the selection and then choose trace as a pattern. And then you can see the ghost of the patterns floating around. I'm just going to click anywhere in the 2D window and place those. We're going to call the points of the pattern that we just traced off A, B, C, and D, and E, F, G, and H. Step four is a very subtle change to the collar. And you're going to find that because this piece is so small that there's going to be a lot of these very subtle changes. But basically, this is the center front of the front of the collar. And we're just going to lower this point by one eighth of an inch. Uh, ideally, I could just drag this whole line down, but the curve points are creating some awkwardness here. So I'm going to have to move these two points individually. So I'm just going to click point F and then drag down, right click, and then for distance moved, I'm going to do 0.125. That is one eighth of an inch. So zero on the X axis and then negative 0.125 on the Y axis. Click OK. And then I'm just going to do the same thing for point H. So click, drag, right click, 0.125 and then OK. So that essentially just moved these two points down just ever so slightly. And that helps the front of the collar wrap around the neck and gives it a little bit of life. Step five is to sew the collar to the garment. So I'm going to go to the segment sewing tool or the N hotkey and that is right here in the 2D toolbar. I'm just going to click line A, B near A, and then click the corresponding line on the back there, and then E, F to the front neck line here, and it looks like nothing's twisted, so we're good. Once those are sewn, we can go to the 3D window, and then go to the Select Move tool, or the Q hotkey, and that's right here in the 3D toolbar. And hold Shift and click both of these patterns to select them, and then right-click the selection, and then choose Superimpose Over. And that is the easiest way to get those colors to lay the way that we want in the 3D window. Step 7 is just to duplicate these colors with symmetric sewing, so while they're selected in the 2D window, Go ahead and um, use Control or Command D to duplicate with symmetric sewing and then place anywhere in the 2D window. 
now we can go ahead and sew the front collar to the back collar and then the collars together. So going back to that segment sewing tool or the N hotkey, just go ahead and sew line BD to line EG and then line AC to the other line AC. That's the center back and that should sew everything together in the 3D window. Go ahead and press space to simulate to see your work and it looks like we have a very nice flat collar so uh yeah this is a flat collar and it's called a flat collar because it lies perfectly flat against the body and if this is the style of collar you want you can go ahead and skip to step 17 where i will show you how to true and finish it up if you, however, want a collar that has a little bit more of a roll along the neckline, so it comes up for a little bit and then goes down, then I'll show you how to do that in the next step. So that this is option one, the flat collar. Option two is a collar with a slight roll to it. And to achieve the roll of the collar, you need to reduce the outer edge of the collar at the shoulder seam. So that will actually make the outer edge of the collar smaller, which will force it to actually go up a little bit before it falls back down. So let's try it. Go to the edit pattern tool or the Z hotkey and right click line CD. So that's the outer edge of the back of the collar and then choose change length. So for the length, um, right now it's, I have six point, you know, whatever. I'm just going to reduce this by about half of an inch. So 5.875 is reduced by half of an inch. You can do more or you can do less. The more you reduce, the more you roll you will have and the less you do, the less roll you will have. Um, there is limits on either side, but about half inch reduction is average. For direction, we want to keep it on start because we don't want to reduce from the center back. We want to reduce at the shoulder seam. So go ahead and click OK. And then we're going to repeat the same process on the front. Right clicking line GH, choosing change length. And then for the length, we want to be a half inch less than whatever this is so about 7.625 and again we're going to keep the direction on start so that it reduces the length at the shoulder seam and leaves the center front alone go ahead and click ok now i'm going to go ahead and simulate to show what this does and um, you might not see anything happen i guess if i lift this up a little bit it's starting to kind of create a roll <laughs> like that but um, it looks kind of terrible so I'm going to go ahead and go to the high res garment option in the 3d toolbar cl click that and then I'm going to just adjust these settings so that the, my particle distance is at five and my skin offset is at zero and that the simulation quality is accurate fitting click OK just to show you what this actually wants to look like here so when I simulate then you can see that roll in the collar it's just a nice gentle roll there um, so that's what happens when you decrease the length of the collar on both the front and the back at the shoulder seam now when the collar starts to roll you can see that it shortens in a way that might not be aesthetic so to accommodate that we're going to go ahead and lengthen this center back seam and this shoulder seam here so i'm going to stop my simulation and then over here i'm going to go to the edit pattern tool or the z hotkey and then i'm going to right click line ac center back change my length and then I just want to add a half of an inch to that, so 3.5. And I want to make sure the direction is on start so that it's lengthening it this way. Go ahead and click OK. You can choose any length you want, but if I, I, I was just kind of guessing a half of an inch based on what I was seeing here in the 3D window. So um, it's really up to you how much you want to add. Then on the shoulder seam, I'm going to, or line BD, I'm going to right click that and choose change length. And I'm gonna add maybe a quarter inch there because it didn't quite roll as much on the shoulders as it did the back. So we'll only add a quarter inch, 3.25. And I do wanna change the direction to end so that it adds it on the outer edge of the collar, not the inner edge. Go ahead and click OK. And then I wanna do that same thing on line EG. So right click, change length, and to make sure that it's true to the other side, 3.25. 
and then the same thing I want it to adjust at the end so it's on the outside of the collar not on the inside click OK all right now when I simulate you can see that I've added a little bit of extra length here and my collar looks pretty good it's so this is a slightly rolled collar, and if this is the collar style that you want, then you can also go ahead and skip ahead to step 17 for truing. If you would like even more roll, I will show you that in the next step. So the next one, option is option three, a roll collar that is has more roll in the back and then is flatter in the front. So to accomplish this, this is now we're on step 13, we're going to go to the fullness line tool and there is no hotkey for this. It's right here in the 2D toolbar. You have to click and hold on fullness point to find fullness line. And now we're going to start, we're only going to adjust the back. We're going to click on point A, then point B, then point C, and then point D. And this will allow us to not only reduce the length on the outer edge of the collar, but also to adjust the curve on the inside of the collar. So there's only so much you can do with just moving the this point here without adjusting the inside curve, but this will actually kind of um, uncollapse this collar to straighten it out, which will give us a nice roll in the back. So for the direction, we're going to leave it on start. We're gonna leave all of this alone, but for the slash line length, we're going to go to distance moved, and then we're going to choose negative one inch. And you can see what I mean by it's straightening out this collar. You can do more, you can do less, but this gives you a pretty average amount to start with. Go ahead and click okay. The more you reduce this by this, the higher the roll will be basically. Okay, so now that that is done, Let's go ahead and simulate to see what happens. So you can see it just heightened the roll of the collar in the back, but it left it flat in the front. So if this is the collar that you would like, then you can go ahead and skip to step 17. But if you want a collar that is evenly rolled all the way around, then go ahead and go to the next step, which is option four, the roll collar that is high in the back and the front so going back to that fullness line tool we're pretty much going to do the same thing where we are going to click on point e then point f then point g then point h and then direction stays on start so that it's reducing it at the shoulder distance moved negative one inch and so it's straightening out the front collar go ahead and click ok and now when i simulate it is going to start to roll all the way to the front. And if you wanted to see even more roll in the front, you could go ahead and actually sew the center front together. And then you can see that there's getting this nice roll all the way around. But I'm gonna leave it unsewn for this tutorial. So now that we've gone through all those steps, we really don't want to touch this inner edge. We want to leave it alone as much as possible. So just keep that in mind while we're working through this. I want to go ahead and um, merge this collar so that it's one piece. It was useful to have it in multiple pieces while we were working on it, but now I, I just want it to be in one piece because that's how you make a collar. So I'm going to go to the edit sewing tool or the B hotkey, and that is right here in the 2D toolbar. And then I'm just going to right click line BD on the back and then click merge and that will merge the front to the back which I want to do because I want to keep the back on the grain like where it is. And then I can go ahead and right click line AC which is the center back to merge the backs together. So now we have one unified collar. All of my annotations went everywhere. All right, I adjusted my annotations a bit, and now you can see that um, it's got, I've got all these baselines showing me what I've where I've been. Um, I want to actually delete points E and G because they are interrupting the curve of my collar. It's kind of ugly to have this dip here. We don't really want that. We want a smooth curve. But if I delete these points, if I just click them and hit delete, then um, it deletes all of my curves, which is not what I want. So I'm actually going to, with the edit pattern tool or the Z hotkey, I'm going to shift click both of these points, and then I'm going to right click and then choose 
convert to curve point. So that will convert it to a curve point. It won't delete the other points. If I click V on the keyboard, I can see the curve points. Now, step 19 is to optimize the curve points. So again, if I click V on the keyboard, you can see all these curve points. There's a lot of them. We don't really need so many. We want to clean it up a little bit. So I'm going to go to the edit pattern tool, the Z hotkey, and I'm going to right click line <laughs> AF. <laughs> and then ch uh, choose optimize curve points. This little dialog box will open up and I can actually kind of reduce and select. Um, it usually does a pretty good job making the curve points, um, like uh, reducing them while still maintaining the integrity of the curve. So I'm just going to click okay. I'm going to do the same on this outer edge, I right click, optimize curve points, and then look at that, it got them down to two, that's great. So now that I'm looking at this, uh, the outer line looks pretty good. There's still a weird bump on the inner line, and there might actually be like a little peak here at the center of this collar. So I want to do some work to clean up these curve points even further. So I'm going to go to the edit curve point tool, which is the V hotkey. That's right here in the 2D toolbar. I have to click and hold on edit pattern to find edit curve point. And I'm gonna identify what curve points are kind of creating problems. It looks like this, of course, this one that I um, converted from a point is kind of bumpy. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that one. And then maybe this one too, just to see. All right, that's a much more smooth curve. So um, yeah, this curve looks smooth, but I still, if um, I'm not getting uh, and 180 degree angle here at the center back, which means there is like a peak right here and a peak down here. So to true that, I'm going to go and dra maybe drag this curve point um, pretty close to the center back. So it's about 180 degrees, 181 is pretty good. And then I might go ahead and click this line to add another curve point and then drag that one down close to this point. So that's 180 degrees, perfect. If you have other curve points you don't want, all you have to do is click and delete them. If you want to add more curve points, like I just did, you just click the line to add them. And then if you just want to move things around, you just have to click and drag and move them around. But um, right now, this looks pretty good. It looks pretty true. I'm going to go ahead and hit simulate to see what happens. And there we go. That's a very lovely looking collar. Now, from this point, if you want to change the shape of this outer collar, you are welcome to. Um, if you make it significantly bigger, it will affect the roll, um, but you're welcome to, you know, curve out this point, change this shape. Maybe I'll just demonstrate a little bit. If I um, click and drag H out, you know, I give myself this nice um, cute little collar here. You can change the shape of this outer curve. Just avoid touching this inner curve because this inner curve is dependent on this all of the processes that we just went through if you want a different role in the collar i do recommend going back to the beginning and drafting it from scratch again so that is collars for you please let me know if you have any further questions in the comments and if you want to learn how to draft stand collars and shirt collars then that is in another tutorial on my channel thanks for watching